a Christian primary school teacher who was sacked after refusing to use a pupil's preferred pronouns is taking legal action against the council for unfair dismissal and religious discrimination. She says the school helped the eight-year-old girl transition into a boy two years earlier, demanding that staff use the child's preferred male pronouns and male name. The primary school pupil was also allowed to use the boy's toilets and dressing rooms. The teacher can't be identified for legal reasons, but I spoke to her a little earlier and she explained why she felt compelled to intervene. So the question I was always asking was, are we doing harm? Can we, you know, look into this and, and have a proper discussion about this? Um, and so it came to the point where I formally raised it as a safeguarding concern. So I, having spoken to the head teacher, I um, sent a letter to the head and the governors of this school. Um, they basically dismissed my concerns um, and said, from their point of view, the school had done everything um, that was procedurally correct. They'd gone through the right channels to get advice and all the rest of it. But the one thing they didn't engage with was um, hundreds of pages of evidence from experts who had worked in this field, medical experts, an endocrinologist, a um, psychotherapist, a psychologist, I presented them this evidence, all these medical experts were saying, don't affirm a child, it does far more damage than good. Um, yeah. And that was the one thing they seemed in unable to engage with. The teacher is being supported by the Christian Legal Center, and I can speak to its barrister, Rebecca Benstead, now. Rebecca, thank you for joining us. Uh, the school is claiming that this teacher has breached GDPR. Now, surely that's not relevant here if this is a whistleblowing case for a safeguarding concern. Well, that's right. Um, and uh, this, they are saying that, um, but nothing in data protection law prevents somebody from raising legitimate safeguarding concerns. Um, so they're not correct about that. And the school also claims that the teacher's views were discriminatory. Is it not the school that's being discriminatory against the teacher's Christian views for compelling them to go along with this? Well, this is actually much more about concern for a vulnerable seven-year-old child and the way that a school are dealing with a child's gender distress. Uh, so this is a teacher who is brave and principled and is concerned that the school are not properly responding. Um, instead of um, taking proper medical advice and getting a, a, a team, a, a multidisciplinary team around the table um, and considering uh, this child's situation and potentially uh, the issues that are behind gender distress, uh, which quite often are caused perhaps by neurodiversity or perhaps trauma in the child's life. Instead of considering those things, the school was very, very quick to move to an affirming policy and to allow a seven-year-old uh, to uh, present as a boy for all purposes at the school. I, I, I think it's absolutely outrageous that a, a six, seven, eight-year-old is, is going into the wrong toilets and the wrong change rooms. That's a safeguarding concern for that child, but also for the other children around them. And I, if a teacher is being bullied out of her job for raising this concern, what hope do other teachers have? Well, that's true. Um, and in fact, this story started uh, rather before this child was even on the scene. Uh, when the school introduced training for all the staff. Uh, this training came from the local authority and from somebody who had a, a Stonewall Champion sign-off uh, on their email. Um, and it was training on transgender issues, which was entirely partisan and without balance uh, and um, was inappropriate. Um, and the, the teacher raised this e even before uh, the child concerned uh, was in her class. And she said that there should be balance uh, and that there are obligations that the school has it, to make sure that they're not politically partisan. And they're presenting gender ideology um, belief as fact, and they're doing it to the staff. And so that was the first thing. So it wasn't really a surprise when uh, a child with gender distress presented themselves uh, that the school went then immediately down the line of accepting um, that the child should be socially transitioned. And of course, social transition has 
serious risks for a child. It puts them on a trajectory, which may well lead to breast binding for a girl and potentially puberty blockers and all the health risks that are associated with that. And this was being done uh, without proper risk assessment to the child or to the other children in the class um, and was not being done um, based on proper independent medical advice. Uh, so the teacher raised a, a, a safeguarding concern, and when it was ignored, she took it to the governors. She then took it to the um, LADO, the local authority designated officer, um, with evidence, with weighty evidence uh, from medics, as you've heard. And this really was not engaged with the tool, and she wasn't taking any notice of. So the question was then, well, what to do? Uh, where you think that somebody's being harmed? and nobody's listening, what do you do? So she took legal advice and she was helped by Christian Legal Centre to bring a judicial review to challenge the school's policy, which was what happened. Uh, but she ended up then getting uh, being dismissed by the school who accused her of a breach of confidentiality in sharing that information with lawyers. Absolutely ridiculous. Well, thank God for the Christian Legal Centre and thank you for uh, telling us about this, Rebecca.